I interview a lot of people, a lot of celebrities that make tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. I just interviewed Joe Smith, who made $61 million. Who? Joe Smith. Who's that? Uh, he was number one draft pick in like 1990. He played for 13 years. His wife recently opened up an OnlyFans behind his back and the argument was captured on video and streamed all over well, the world. How did he make his money? Well, he made his money in the NBA, but then at the end of his career, between having a bunch of kids, a nasty divorce, buying a bunch of houses he lost money on, moving, he was, he was the most traded like, uh, player of all time, essentially. And by the time he retired, the money was essentially gone. I interview a lot of people like this. You know, uh, Andre Risen lost all his money eventually. And people assume that someone like yourself, who made tons of money primarily from one album, that by this time in your, in your life, that you would be broke. But the exact opposite happened with you. So tell me what business moves you started to make early on that put you in a situation of where you are right now. Publishing. I bought that and then I had money. And then I was like, you know what? Uh, but I had money to buy it, which was a good thing. Because I've always made great investments, which is why I was telling you I've never been bitter about any Suge Knight thing. I've never been bitter. Look at me. <laughs> what am I bitter about? Money? Really? I don't think so. So for me, I, uh, one of the questions I, I did, a, you, you might remember VH1. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a behind the music. You remember that? Yeah, I watched it. So I did a behind, one of the first ones probably on there. And they just had like a two second clip, you might remember. And they said, how did you not end up like MC Hammer? I don't get it. You know, they came in video. This was way back. And, well, and, I, and I just want to say MC Hammer did not end up broke. Like I've interviewed no, MC but Hammer. No, the story on how you did. The story he lost is exaggerated, but, but he's, he's still okay today. And he's a great friend of mine, by yeah. the way, and I wish him all the best. But, but as public perception, and you have to kind of give that disclaimer like you just yes. did to kind of, because exactly. you know yeah, how people. I want to be fair, because I'm from the Bay, and I right. don't want to say, oh, MC Hammer's broke and homeless right now. Vlad, this not, is what I love true. about you, is that yeah. you are fair, and, yes. and that you do your, some of your research. Exactly. And you may not be 100% accurate because of something you read, but <laughs> you, at least you'll try to get a, a happy neutral. Yes. And that's good, because so much fluff out there for people just trying to fluff it up on their own. When they can't fill in their spots, they make up spots and make up things to fill right. in the stories, and that happens a lot. So just to be clear, MC Hammer and I, Still friends to today, but pr public perception is, is that, you know, Jay-Z makes jokes. Everybody makes the MC Hammer thing is like he lost everything. We all know he made good investments after that. And he's still doing decent or whatever and not broke. Mm -hmm. But I think he lost a big portion of his income or whatever ha happened that caused him to be that kind of a target for everybody going, don't want to end up like MC Hammer. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, and I wish him all the best. Great guy. Me too. And a uh, total legend, by the way. 100%. And, had a, and he pulled me on tour with him, you know, and yeah. did and so They many styled things. you after MC Hammer, essentially, right? Like they tried overall... to because I was on his tour to style yeah. me with wise and stuff. And I'm young and I don't know. And I think all these people know everything. I just follow the rules or whatever <laughs> they tell me to do. And I'm the puppet. That's, I was the puppet kid. Yeah. I don't, how could you ever know before I did what I did that it was going to be such a big impact? I'm not talking a number one song on the chart. That's not an impact. When, this, when, it, when your whole persona as Vanilla Ice becomes an anthem and the song becomes, this is our stapled tattoo from, the end of, from now to the end of the world for the 90s. This is it, this is our guy. This is an anthem. Yeah. Not any other song on the charts through the entire 90s is the anthem, but Ice Ice Baby is. And it's, it takes on a life of its own that's bigger than anything I predicted or expected. So you have to understand, I'm still blown away by how big and impactful it is and how, how, how it's continuing to recreate itself and still continue to go. It's phenomenal, right?